Okay, so I'm going to go through and kind of show you guys what I do to record each of my math videos. Um, my name is Brianna Crossman and my email's there if you feel like you need to contact me for any reason. Um, I teach geometry at Winter Springs High School. Um, I taught Algebra 1 last year and um, I create videos more as a supplement for my students if they're like absent or if I feel like we don't have enough time to go in depth and um, go through the answers on a worksheet or something like that. So the different materials that I use, um, I use an iPad and on the iPad I use an app called Notability which um, I will get to. Um, I'll show you what that is and where it is and all of that. Um, I also, I use a Mac so I plug my uh, iPad into my Mac. The problem with using just an iPad and doing a screen record is that the um, students will not be able to hear your voice with it. Um, which I have found is a huge problem. So, yes. And then um, in order to connect your iPad to your computer, then you're going to need the um, lightning to USB cable, um, the same one that you would charge your I iPad with. And I always keep my, um, my Mac plugged in and charging so that it doesn't die in the middle of my recording or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure that you'd be able to do this exact same process with a PC, but I use my Mac and it works wonderfully. Um, you're going to need something to write on your iPad with, um, like a stylus or something like that. I use an Apple Pencil. <clears throat> and then if you are on your Mac, then your Mac comes with a QuickTime player, um, which is how I actually project my what my iPad looks like onto my Mac so I can record it. Um, and I actually do my recording with QuickTime, which I will show you. Um, and then I upload my videos to Edpuzzle, which again, I will show you. If you don't have an Ed Edpuzzle account, then um, you can use YouTube and or whatever your, good, um, whatever your district is okay with. Um, advantages of using this system is that students can watch notes being filled in while they are listening to your voice. Um, I This is the method that we used. Oh, actually, hold on. I am right here. Hi there. Um, this is the method that we used last year with our Algebra 1 class and my students last year followed me to geometry so I have all the same students that I had last year whereas last year we had like 56 my top was 56 students in one class, um, not just me. There were a lot of teachers in the room, but um, there, there were so many, so many kids in the room that we couldn't do any kind of direct instruction. So we had to, and that was kind of the point. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do everything off of videos because there were so many different levels in there, level one to level five on the EOC scale. Um, there were so many different levels that we didn't know how to um, do any kind of differentiating instruction in there. So we did videos and said this so that they could back up the video and they could relearn something and they could actually like slow us down if they wanted to. Or if they were a super high level and they wanted to skip through the video then they could do that too. But because we were using Edpuzzle, we could um, track all of that. Well, since I have the same kids as last year, um, the majority of them are sick and tired of videos. Whereas there are a few that really saw the value in the videos and they aren't seeing it as this thing their teacher made them do. They're seeing it as super helpful and um, their parents were the same way. They, I constantly got emails saying like, this program is awesome and I can actually watch the video and remind myself how to do things and then I can help my kid at home. And that was our, our main goal with it. So um, I'm gonna show you how to use all of that. Um, so those are the advantages and then disadvantages. The problem is that um, students can't see your face and I have found a couple ways around that. Um, but I had to download different things and it, it's a whole process. So if anybody has any kind of different way of having kids see your face while you are actually filling in notes, I am all for hearing new ideas. Okay. So the first thing I want to go through is um, not really the connections because everything, it's just your iPad is plugged into your computer. Um, but I will show you QuickTime. Um, so I find QuickTime by going to my Launchpad and I literally type in QuickTime and it's the QuickTime player right there. So when I click that, 
it comes up and is some kind of little finder thing. And I actually go into the top corner up here and I click file and I click new movie recording. Okay, and automatically it comes up as a movie towards me, but since I have my iPad connected, I can go in right here and I can click any of these things. Right now I have my iPad connected. I want to click my iPad because I want it to display what my iPad is gonna be displaying. It's thinking, it's thinking, and that is exactly what's on my iPad right now. So the reason I have it um, shown right here is because that first thing right there, that's Notability. That's the program that I use, the app that I use. So first thing I would do is get that app. It's awesome. Yes, it costs a little bit of money, but I've had that app um, ever since I started teaching. So this is my third year teaching and I've used it for just about everything. So it's really awesome. Um, cool. And then I will show you, this is what Notability looks like. Let me expand that screen so you can actually see everything. Great. So this is what Notability looks like and it has all of these different files and let me just show you like one of the things. This top one, um, this is my honors geometry test review. Um, so I already made a video for this one and I went through while I was recording and I filled in all of these and I talked through the entire lesson with them but um, I can write directly on this page. They have this page and I can write whatever I want to on there and I can delete things and I can do different colors of highlighters or my pen and it's a super super awesome tool to use. Um, the one issue that I found with it is that you have to import PDFs. So okay let's look. You can up in this top corner the little pencil. Um, you can just go for a normal page and write like that. And if you go on into the toolbar up in the top, you can change the paper. So you can make it a graph paper. You can change the color of it if you really want to. Like that's how I would take notes in department meetings. But um, if you actually want to write directly on the paper that they that you're giving your students, then you need to import it into Notability. So what I'm going to do is no, go away. Um, my my computer is working really hard. If you can hear it working. Um, I'm going to go over to, let's say this one. So see that it says that it's a doc, it's a document, whereas this one's a PDF and this one is a screenshot. So I'm going to show you how those three things um, import into my iPad. So I'm going to share this. I'm going to airdrop it. You can also email it to yourself and open it there. I'm going to share it with my iPad. Okay, and so this is what I'm seeing on my iPad. I'm going to go down to the third one down, so Notability, and I'm going to create a new note and import. And so the issue here is that it doesn't look exactly like, um, you see how these, this is like super close together here and it just does not look, <laughs> it doesn't look perfect and everything's like shifted down and maybe some pictures are missing it it's not perfect and so whenever you um, import a a doc like that or um, a word document or something like that so you can't even see all the words here um, it's going to shift down in that way so now let me show you if you open up a PDF instead this is a different document but it was just the one that I had here um, share airdrop going to airdrop it to myself and then I'm going to open it up, up in Notability, create a new note, import, and now it looks really pretty and it's literally exactly what your students will see so you can write directly on there and the nice thing about the Notability app is you can also zoom in um, if the students can't see it, whereas when you're writing on the board, you can't exactly zoom in. So I also use my iPad in class um, when I am projecting up on the board. I have an Apple TV in my room and I just project everything onto the board using this instead of actually writing on the board um, as much as I can. And then just to show you how a picture will come in, I'm going to share, airdrop, 
I'm gonna hope this one works the way that I want it to. Okay, so that one just came straight into my pictures. So I'm gonna go up in the top corner and I'm going to open it up in more into Notability. Sent to Notability. So let's see if it actually was, nope, that's FaceTime. Let's see if it was actually sent to Notability. Oh, yes. Create a new note. Open. Okay, so now the actual picture is in Notability and I can write directly on that too if you are any ever like screenshotting something from the internet and you want to do it that way. So that was just to show you how that works. So um, now my next issue was um, how to get my face to show. So I, that's why I have FaceTime open because yes, you can use FaceTime on your iPad, but as you can see, this was laying flat. So I have to pick it up to be able to see anything <laughs> and or for them to be able to see me and then they can't see what I'm writing and there's a whole big issue there. Um, I can also, let's see, if I go to the launch pad and I go to photo booth, this one right here, or whatever your camera is on your um, computer, that's how, that's how this one is working. Um, I just have photo booth opened and then I'm just screen recording everything that's happening um, with a different app that I, the name of that escapes me so I can get that to you. Um, but it was an app that I downloaded on my computer to be able to screen record um, and have the voice included in it. Um, and then I also, like you could use FaceTime here on your Mac, but the problem with that one is, actually I don't think I actually want to do it. Um, the problem with FaceTime on your Mac is that the numbers, all the, your recent um, calls, all your recent FaceTimes um, show up there. So you might have people's phone numbers in there that and they don't really want your their phone number to be broadcasted everywhere. Um, whereas when I showed it to you on my iPad, most of them were covered up, I believe, I hope. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, the entire number was not shown. Okay, yes, so what else? We did the QuickTime setup, we did Photo Booth, we did Notability. Um, so basically what I do when I go into QuickTime, oh, we, did, we do need to do a puzzle. So this is QuickTime right here. You're seeing exactly what I see on my screen and what I would do is I would go and just push the record button and um, record the entire thing that way. And then when you're done, click the record button again. And basically what's going to happen is you're going to be able to file. You're going to be able to export as you, if you're uploading it to um, Edpuzzle, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, you can't upload anything that is greater than 1000. So um, 1000 pixels, I think. Um, so I do 720 and that's just how big the picture is going to look. Okay, um, so let's go over to Edpuzzle real fast so you can see what that looks like. Um, this is my Edpuzzle account. When I log into Edpuzzle, this is the first thing that comes up. I can see all the different math um, programs that are happening in my school. Um, another good person to reach out to is Deanna Jackson. She also works at our school. She was my co-teacher last year, and um, she and I work together to do a lot of these videos and to figure out all the technology behind the videos. So what I do, I'm going to go to my content here on the side. This is everything that I have created this year. So you can see some of them I did show my face. It's gonna be the same way that I'm recording this video now, whereas all the other ones, um, they are just the, um, me recording the, gosh, what's it called? The, <laughs> the iPad, there we go. So if I want to add content, I can do it right here and I can upload a video. Um, whereas if I already have one, then I can click it. I can assign it to my different classes. Um, and I can, when I'm assigning something, I can say that I don't want them to skip it. I want them to go through every single part of the video. Um, I can set a start date and a due date. I can put a public link if I want to. I can add different classes. Right now I have one big class because um, it's supposed to be a supplement. I'm not doing any of these videos for a grade in the grade book, but if I wanted to, then I could. Um, I can also, 
I'm not seeing where it is. Oh, it would be an edit. So if I go back to my content, then I can take these. Yep, I know you really, I don't know how, where it is. Oh, I've already assigned it so I can't edit it. That's what it is. Um, but before I assign it, then I can edit it and I can actually input questions into there and I can check for understanding as my kids are going through the, um, the lessons. So I think that Jackson did that in one of these. So if I click here, I can see edit. I can crop the video. I can put quizzes in there. Um, my computer's just working really hard, so that's why it's not really letting us. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so these are all the questions that she's already input, and um, these ones are just showing where the different questions are. But you can make the questions multiple choice, or fill in the blank, or whatever you want to do. And then I'm just going to go back. If I go to my classes, then these are all the things that I've already assigned. And so you can see exactly how many people have completely finished each one of these videos. But if I went in and I scrolled through, I don't want to show you all of the names of my students. So I'm not going to do that. But um, I can go through and um, I can see how much of the video they've watched. And if I were grading it, I could go to the grade book and see if they got all those questions correct and that sort of thing. Um, I can class options. This is the class code. So once they make a um, an account with Edpuzzle, then they can copy that class code and they can that's how they get into my course and they see all of my videos. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, it's a work in progress. It's something that like I'm constantly trying to find new technology to um, make my videos better than they are right now and more entertaining to the students. I know like my students like it when they can see my voice, see my voice, when they can see my face um, while I'm teaching. And I, my facial expressions, they help a lot when I am teaching. It's just, it's the way I teach. Um, so I have been trying to figure out how to make it more of like an algebra nation type video where they have the, um, the person in the bottom corner and you can see their face all the time but you can still also at the same exact time see everything that's going on on my ipad for instance um i haven't figured it out yet so if you have any technology that you want to share or want me to look at then i would be more than happy to look at it i'm all about trying new things so if you have any questions let me know otherwise i will talk to you guys later